Uh, looks like the propaganda war is heating up on the Korean peninsula. South Korean military authorities say the North is moving to install loudspeakers aimed at their country. And this follows the South's resumption of a similar campaign for the first time in six years. Officials in Seoul, however, say they will not operate their loudspeakers today, despite Pyongyang sending hundreds more trash-filled balloons across the border over the weekend. Well, the influential sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un earlier warned of further responses if South Korea keeps up what she calls psychological warfare. Kim Yo-jong says that Seoul's politicians are continuing to create a new crisis environment, calling it a prelude to a very dangerous situation. Seoul says about 330 balloons were sent overnight. They were filled with waste paper and plastic, with no toxic material detected so far. 우리 군은 어, 북한의 어떠한 도발에도 압도적으로 대응할 수 있는 능력을 갖추고 있고 또 북한군의 동향을 예의주시하고 있습니다. 어, 따라서 그 새로운 어, 대응이라는 것도 어, 우리 군이 충분히 대응할 수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. Provided by the military on Sunday, trucks were shown carrying loudspeakers and soldiers assembling them in a training exercise. The military said it was the first such training since 2018. The location and date of the training were not disclosed. The decision to resume the broadcasts as a form of psychological warfare was made after North Korea began launching about 330 balloons with trash attached a day before, with about 80 of them dropping over the border. That's according to South Korea's military. <laughs> South Korea's broadcasts include world news and information about democratic and capitalist society, with a mix of popular K-pop music. The sound is believed to travel more than 12 miles into North Korea. Pyongyang started sending balloons carrying trash and manure across the border in May. It has said the move was in retaliation for anti-North leaflets flown by South Korean activists as part of a propaganda campaign. North Korea has shown some of the angriest reactions towards the leaflet campaign and the loudspeaker broadcasts, in some cases firing weapons at the balloons and speakers. South Korea stopped the broadcasts under an agreement signed by the two Korea's leaders in 2018. But tensions have mounted since then as Pyongyang pushed ahead with weapons development. And for more, let's uh, bring in CNA senior correspondent Lin Yun Suk in Seoul, as well as Gordon Kang. He's a senior analyst from NTU's Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Well, thanks uh, so very much for joining us this evening. Let's uh, start with you first, Yun Suk. Um, let's just start with the lead story today, where uh, Seoul only just resumed its loudspeaker campaign for the first time in six years. But why exactly do you think they are pausing operations uh, of its border loudspeaker today? Well, you know, Tell, it seems like South Korea is doing this uh, very cautiously and is watching to see how North Korea reacts and what it does before it goes ahead with any more broadcasts. Now, the official line from the Defense Ministry in a regular briefing this morning was that South Korea was conducting this in a flexible way based on strategic and, and operational um, situations and that they have to consider several issues um, before they go ahead and continue to do this. And so therefore, South Korea is conducting the broadcast uh, for the necessary amount of time at the necessary period of time period. Now, the spokesperson didn't say when or if South Korea will be carrying out the broadcasts again. Right, uh, Gordon, let's uh, bring you in here. So we don't know when the broadcast uh, will be will happen again, but perhaps you could just give us a little bit of a background in terms of the use of balloons and loudspeakers uh, in the Korean conflict. And um, I guess, uh, how, how do you think this tactic has evolved over time? Right, yes. So firstly, thank you for your questions. I'm happy to give my two cents. Um, I think it's important, yes, like you said, to contextualize and recognize that leaflet launching and propaganda broadcasts have been a sticking point of psychological warfare, even dating back to the Korean War. So in recent times, um, this has provoked the ire of, of North Korea due to, to the contents of these, of these uh, actions. So these, these balloon launches from South Korea, um, human rights activists actually contained um, around 300,000 anti-regime leaflets and around 2,000 USB drives of, uh, containing K-pop and other kinds of South Korean music. 
So propaganda broadcasts in the, have in the past also typically uh, contained anti-DPRK messaging and narratives, information about life in South Korea, information about the world at large, K-pop and the like. So for a society like North Korea, you know, political thinking is a core aspect of their social life. And to, to the state, such actions are ultimately viewed as insulting, demeaning, but uh, more importantly, a, a threat to alternative uh, the threat of alternative modes of thinking that questions the legitimacy of the, of the current government. And this is particularly concerning for uh, border regions as well, where conditions are perhaps not as equal to those in Pyongyang. Well, you know, um, Gordon, you know, back in 2015, North Korea fired those projectiles towards South Korea's loudspeakers, which resulted in South Korea also firing back dozens of artillery rounds. Now, do you think that something similar could happen? You know, will North Korea take similar uh, provocative actions to get South Korea to stop? Yes, I think this is a very interesting question because I think recent events actually reflect an attempt on North Korea's part um, with, to leverage the perceived, their perceived opportunity and sharpen an argument that ROK is the main instigator and driver of escalating inter-Korean tensions. So this is perhaps more of a symbolic attempt rather than a security uh, attempt which, um, the North, which North Korea is trying to, to drive it. For example, in Kim Yo-jong's press statement earlier this morning, she, she stated that uh, North Korea only scattered empty um, waste paper without any political agitation, saying that this was a reaction at a very low level and different from the, quote, provocative political agitation that was sent from the ROK. And I think it's key to remember that this response from North Korea um, uh, in the past month has been quite unusual, has been quite different and, and quite creative. Escalating tensions in recent times means to say missile launches, drone incursions, jamming of GPS signals, etc. But instead, these balloon launches are, are quite minimal in their direct security risks. Um, instead, it is the political messaging that, that's reinforced, right? The thousand balloons was in, two weeks ago was filled with waste and manure. This weekend's balloon launches were most, mostly contain garbage and, and no hazardous materials. Last Sunday, they also said they would temporarily halt these launches if there was no further anti-DPRK leaflet launches. So I think in short, I think DPRK assessed what options it could work with and made the decision that um, to focus on the political symbolism instead uh, in the response through its metaphorical and material implications. And, and Gordon, you talked about how, you know, it's about political messaging and, and trying to reinforce that. I want to bring you back to, I believe it was like 2018. I don't know whether if you recall the sonic weapon that was uh, used by Taiwanese forces at Kinmen against the mainland uh, China. And it's basically a large speaker system that broadcasts this, like really loud, uh, high decibel sounds and music. Uh, so Gordon, do you, can you draw any parallels uh, between the, those sort of propaganda part broadcasts, what's happening now, and, and how do these tactics uh, compare? Compare and contrast. Yes, well, I think there is definitely a certain level of, um, of, of perhaps, shall we say, material uh, consequences of these propaganda broadcasts. I mean, it, they are very loud, and, and it would definitely be uh, very painful for, for people in the surrounding vicinity. But I think more importantly, it, it is ultimately still quite a localized uh, context uh, where these propaganda broadcasts are being situated in. But what it means more broadly is more important, I think, to, to North Korea. Um, and I think it is what it, it is that, that that they are very concerned with because um, it, in, in the content which is broadcast, you know, it includes criticism of Kim Jong-un and the North Korean system, you know, of trying to um, demonstrate the superiority of South Korea's uh, systems, of international economic standards, of human rights standards, and, and various types of K-pop as well. And back in the Korean War, you know, they, they likewise also attacked, attacked each other's attitudes um, towards, you know, regarding their alliances with the US or China as puppet regimes, you know, and, and tried to create divisions between, between their allies as well. So I think there is more emphasis placed on ultimately the, the propaganda effects of, of this rather than um, simply the, the direct security uh, implications of these. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, I think this mm -hmm. is a... a about uh, about the worries over the concerns of the legitimacy of their of their systems. Mm. Uh, Yun Suk, I want to talk about um, uh, Kim Jong Un's uh, influential sister Kim Yo Jong. I mean, she she's warned of further responses if South Korea continues this psychological warfare. And any ideas what what some of these responses uh, might look like? 
Well, you know, Telly, you know, with North Korea, anything is possible. And with North Korea being unpredictable, many experts here are saying that it's very difficult to know what North Korea could do. But if you remember the 2018 agreement that the two Koreas signed, that included setting up the buffer zones around the border to suspend the large scale military exercises and also banning the hostile acts like the um, loudspeaker broadcast. But since the deal has been suspended by both Koreas, some experts here are saying that it's very likely that both sides could conduct our uh, military drills along the border. Um, and we also know that in recent weeks, um, North Korean troops have been seen clearing trees and building fences within the demilitarized zone, separating the two Koreas. Why? Uh, we're unsure, but South Korea military says that it is always an alert and ready for any provocations by North Korea. Uh, also, Gordon, I, I mean, when it comes to the South uh, Koreans and, and public opinion and what do they think about all these uh, ramped up tensions, how much do, do they care and, and sh should they care about it? Is it important? Well, I think it's definitely important for South Koreans to, to understand, you know, the context of, of, um, of these balloon launches and, and, these, and, and the possibility of escalating tensions. Um, but I think the, the key here is to recognize that um, there needs to be a certain level of um, a certain level of shall we say patience, a certain level of um, shall we say strategic space and thinking about uh, what it means when North Korea clears its three trees, for example, around the MZ um, and and with the you know the removal of the of the CMA. Um, North, North Korea has stated publicly at the start of the year that they would. One, they are looking to abandon a reunification, deinstitutionalize several aspects of inter-Korean uh, relations, and in this in this circumstance, you know, there is more than just um, the security implications of this as well. Because um, in North Korea's own national strategy, they also emphasize um, a focus towards maximizing their own strategic alignments at, currently to um, develop their own economy, to develop their social welfare, um, and to develop the society as a whole. So for South Koreans, I think it's important that they keep an eye towards these developments, but but not to not to not to act too hastily, I would say, and especially for um, the government as well. So I think ultimately it is a good sign that the South Korean government um, has decided to uh, pause these uh, pro uh, broadcast messages today, um, and I think that's a, a positive indication for for the you know for the future. Right, good to hear both uh, your thoughts, uh, CNA senior correspondent Lin Min Sook in Seoul, as well as Gordon Kang, a senior analyst from S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies at NTU.